Rub up your engines! Power steering, it's great when it works, but when it breaks, it can cost a fortune to fix. So today I'm gonna show you how to keep it from breaking in the first place. Now there's two main types of power steering systems. The older style that uses power steering fluid and a pump. I'm gonna talk about that first. Then later, I'll talk about the modern ones that use electronic power steering assist that don't use any type of fluid. It's all electronic. Now this is 2007 Matrix and it's got a hydraulic pump. And here's how the system works. When you turn your steering wheel, the high pressure fluid from the pump that can be up to 1500 pounds per square inch, so you turn to the right, it pushes the steering. The rod pushing to the right has extra power from the pump and it's easy to turn. Power assist steering because it's an assist system. Let's say your pump breaks, the belt falls out of it, you'll still have steering. If your car loses power, it won't be you're going down the road and you turn the wheel to not hit a tree and it goes to the tree. It will still turn, it just will not have the assist. It'll just be harder to turn. Now people today take power steering for granted. When I was young, a lot of cars didn't have power steering, but they all have it now. Well, when these systems break, they can cost a small fortune to fix. So there's some very basic maintenance you can easily do yourself to keep them from breaking in the first place because the fluid gets too dirty and it wears a hole in the seals on the pump. The pumps cost hundreds of dollars. And if it gets dirty enough that the seals on the power steering rack go bad. Facing the big old power steering rack down here, that's only the end, it goes the whole way across. Replacing them, realigning the front end, can go anywhere from a thousand to many thousands. I've seen Mercedes Benz's where some of those jobs are eight, twelve thousand dollars replacing those things. So you don't want them to leak, you want them to last. Here's really easy stuff you can do yourself to keep them from breaking in the first place. You can just use one of these turkey baster. You stick it in, you suck fluid out, put it in. Now look at this. I've been a bad boy, look, it's gray and black. Now, I'll show you the difference. This is what the Toyota brand new fluid should look like. la -ti da look, it's pretty much clear. I mean, yeah, look, tint to it, but it's pretty much clear. It's not like that filthy stuff I just took out. What you wanna do is you wanna take as much fluid as you can out of the reservoir with a turkey baster, or I'm a professional mechanic and I'm lazy, I wanna do things quicker. So I use my Mighty Vac vacuum pump. It sucks it out faster. They don't cost much. They're real handy for emptying all kinds of stuff out. Spill something in your house, you can suck it all up. They're real handy pumps. Then once you suck it out, Fill it up to the top fill line. Put the top on. Then we'll close the hood. We're not done. Drive it on the block so the fluid circulates. Then we'll do this. And we're gonna do this five or six times because it's kind of like change the automatic transmission fluid in most cars. When you drain them, even if they hold 12 and a half quarts, two or three quarts comes out. So you gotta do them a bunch of times to get the bunch of the fluid out. So around the block we go. Make a lot of turns. The more turns you make, the more it's gonna circulate. So we'll just drive crazily down the road. There's no one out here this morning anyways. That will make the fluid circulate. And we'll do this five or six times. So here we go again. Take the top off. Talk the dirty fluid out. Pour no fluid in and drive it around. It's that easy to keep it clean so the dirty fluid doesn't wear out internal parts. Make sure you just get the right fluid. As you can see on this thing, it says, for use in all manufacturers, cars, SUVs, and minivans, do not use it with Hondas. Yeah, don't use it with Hondas. Another thing, of course, is make sure your power steering belt is in good shape. It runs off a belt. Now, I just changed this belt. The grooves are clean. It doesn't make any noise. This car only has one belt. So make sure your fan belt's good. This is an automatic tensioner. You don't have to tension it. But if your car has various belts, check the power steering belt, like on my old Celica. As you can see, we popped the hood. This whole thing has its own belt. Power steering pump right over there. And it's got a little baby tiny belt right there. A little baby tiny one. And then the big one runs the alternator. And then the one in the middle, it runs the air conditioner. 
got three belts. Now, of course, the belt isn't as critical as clean fluid because if the belt is loose, it might squeal and the power steering will bind. You just replace it. It's not actually damaging anything on the pump. The pump just wouldn't be pumping right. It isn't going to hurt the pump. The only thing that can hurt the pump is, is if you have an old style one, like my Celica, where you have to manually adjust it. If you adjust it too tight, being too tight will burn the bearings up. But most cars are like this matrix. One belt and it's automatically tensioned so you don't have to touch anything. Just make sure the belt isn't falling apart. So now you know how to maintain your power steering that has fluid. So you don't waste money later on the brakes because you didn't do some simple maintenance. But what about electronic power steering? Well, let's say you got a vehicle with electronic power steering assist. Now I don't have any here because I'm cheap and my cars are all old. And my son's new vehicles are Toyota Tacomas and they both still have power steering pumps because Toyota wants reliable trucks that don't break and they don't want people mad at them. They take their truck out in the mud and woods and then water gets in the electric pump and ruins it and they get mad. So they stayed with power steering pumps on their little pickup trucks even if it's a four or V6. They're still running pumps on them. But many vehicles use electronic power steering pumps, especially a lot of American cars. And since they're run through electronics, here's what you have to maintain. Battery and the alternator. You want to make sure your battery's good. If your battery's weak, you can get voltage surges in the system. Not only can that destroy the alternator, it can wipe out electronic components. So it's a very simple test every once in a while. Have your battery tested. Check it out. Here's how easy it is. Battery tester. Takes a few seconds. Battery health test. 550 cranking amps. R49, that's close enough, who cares? 100%, 82% life, it's in excellent shape. This is a perfect example of not listening to the expression of it ain't broke, don't fix it. Hey, the battery's getting weak, replace it. Don't wait. It can damage all kinds of electronics. And the same thing goes with the alternator. Test it every once in a while, that takes two minutes too. If it's getting weak, replace it. Don't wait till it goes out, it can strand you and it can send voltage surges and destroy stuff. Now if you find your car crank slow, get the battery tested. If you find your headlights get dim at night when you're idling but then go up when you go faster, have the alternator tested. That generally warns you. If your battery light's coming on in the dash, of course get it tested immediately then to see what's wrong. But the other main thing is stop any type of corrosion. Corrosion makes electrical wires have more resistance. They get hot, they can short things out. Now the other main thing is stay away from deep water. You get deep enough to suck water in here while well, it's too late when you're that deep anyway. Electronic power steering pumps, guess what? They're down there and that rack and boot is way down. Now theoretically they're sealed against water. Let's face it, you got an electric motor. You soak it in water, guess what's going to happen? It's going to short itself out and of course you guys that live up north and you're driving in winter with all that slush, snow, and salt mixed in with it, that gets all over and starts shorting out electronics. I mean, let's face the facts. Emergency brake, parking brake on this is still working and it's a 94. The mechanical parking brake on the 07 Matrix there, never touched it, works fine. Electronic parking brakes in the back, electric, salt water, water, mixing together, not a great idea. So I really don't like electronic fire steering because I'm a cheapskate. I don't like fixing stuff. I want something that's going to last 30, 40 years, not something that, oh well, it lasted six years, then it burned out, now you got to buy another one. That's ridiculous. My son had to replace this LG refrigerator that was three years old because the compressor broke because it was a, a new design. They called it our great new design. It's quieter. Yeah, it's real quiet because it stopped working and only three years. Some of the stuff they're taking it too far with electronics. You're gonna find many new cars do have electric power steering. You have no choice but you're either gonna have a reservoir somewhere and a pump that runs off a belt or no fluid and no pump that goes to the power steering. Well with a little bit of maintenance you can continue to take it for granted and not have to worry so much about oh man what if that thing breaks it's gonna cost me 1500 bucks. Just a little maintenance can go a long way. And here's some bonus questions and answers. Captain Clovian says my brakes grind after an hour of driving when I stop 10 miles an hour slower. My honest mechanic says the brakes and rotors are fine. What's the problem? The problem is your brake pads are made out of the wrong material. He says he's honest, so he looks at look, they're all still thick. Don't worry about it. If you don't care, it isn't going to hurt anything. And here's the reason they grind. Because when I was a young mechanic, brake pads are made out of asbestos and it can take heat 
right? They use buildings for stopping fires. Of course, then it causes lung cancer too. So that's why they don't sell them anymore. But they didn't make any noise and they lasted a long time. But then they made them illegal. You can't make break asbestos pads anymore a long time ago. They try all these different materials and they all stop the cars. But a lot of them, as they age, make a lot of noise. Now, if you don't like the noise, do this. Have them change the brake pads with Akabono brake pads, a.k.e. B-O-N-O. -O. It's a Japanese company. They make brake pads for lots of different cars. Their Akabono ceramic pads generally don't make any noise at all. I put them on my own cars. They never make any noise, and they used to make lots of noise. It's a simple fix, but it doesn't mean anything if he says, if you don't care, even though it sounds horrible, it's just that the brake pads are made out of a material that's actually a little too hard, and it makes a noise when it gets hot like that. But if you don't like it, have them put Akamono pads on. The noise will go away then. So if you never want to miss another one of my new car repair videos, remember to ring that bell.